Cool. Let's get started. Um, so today we'll be going over, at least for the coding section, the box model and spacing. Um, but before that, let's just do some announcements. Homework one and two um, should have been turned in like 13 minutes ago, but uh, if you haven't done that already, please get that in as soon as possible. Um, oh, this is not updated. But when we refresh the slides, it'll say due Tuesday. <laughs> no, okay. Sorry about that. All right, yeah. So homework one and two already still do now. Um, and then the lab, lab two, will be due next Tuesday. And homework three, which we'll release after lecture, will be due a week from today. Okay. So this lecture is divided into like three different sections. We're just going to recap some of the things you guys have already learned. Um, it's not going to be a comprehensive review, just like, you know, just a conceptual check. And then we'll get into the box model, what that is, what that looks like. Um, and then we'll do a bit of like design intro um, and how we can apply this box model. Um, so first, some reminders about HTML documents that you guys have hopefully already kind of um, messed with. There is like there are like two main sections. There's the head and the body, and the head is not where we put any content. You guys have already seen this. Um, it's kind of where we like link our CSS file. So we give it like important information for the document to. Um, run properly and like grab necessary assets. Um, but yeah, no content. All the content is stored in the body, so anything that you would want displayed in your actual web page should go in the body. And then some CSS reminders. Um, so just as one of the one of the selectors, color is one that we use pretty often. That refers to text color, whereas background or background color changes the background color of our container. Um, and then also fonts, you know, these are two different ways you can you can write this. Um, the reason for the reason you can use background or background color, um, background is kind of like a catch all uh, statement that refers to multiple different attributes. So there could be like background width or like background, you know, something else. Um, but if we don't specify color, CSS will just kind of like fill in the blanks and figure out that, oh, you're trying to like specify color based on what value you pass through it. Um, same goes with font. Right? Notice we can either specify the attributes separately, size or family, or we can lump them together um, and put it in one line. This is really like functionality-wise, they're equivalent, but you know, one might be better for readability, one might be better for more like concise code. It's kind of up to you to decide how you want to format it. Um, and then yeah, we've seen hover effects. Um, so if you were to hover like an A element or elements with the class A, um, they should turn, or their text should turn to the color blue. Okay. And then just to see an example, um, we have an example HTML file here to our left. Where does the cursor go? Okay. So we have the HTML file here to our left and our CSS file. So um, as we kind of go through the CSS, CSS file from top to bottom. Let's just kind of like think which elements should it be affecting. So let's go slide by slide. So the first, okay, well I already showed. Um, so the first one that we've seen is those. I don't know. It's kind of small, but you can see on the screen we have h1 comma and then li. So notice when we have a comma separated by a space, um, we will be selecting multiple things. So anything with the tag h1 or li should be affected by this selector. Um, and then it should be displayed with the font of Arial. If we look at the next one, let's, before I like move to the slide, let's just think for a minute. Um, which elements should food list and li affect based on this? Also, if you think you know, you can raise your hand. I'm just going to give you guys some time to Okay, cool. Hopefully we said this because notice hash or pound sign hashtag food list that is going to select elements with the ID, not class or tag, the ID of food list. And then when we include a space, uh, whatever follows that space is referring to the child of that container. So 
if we notice we're not actually affecting the UL or like the list itself, it's only the items within it. Okay. Oh, I'll skip again. Not bad. But we can just take a look at it. So if we do the same thing here, notice we're separating by space and now we're using the dot. Um, dot will refer to the class name. So anytime it says like class equals, if you want to refer to that, you have to include a dot before that name. Um, same thing here, we have that like parent child relationship. So anything within a UL that has the class name highlight will be selected here. And then therefore we'll have the background color of yellow. And I guess we just we actually we skipped that one because the cafe list is same thing. If we want to think for a bit, what should that affect? Probably the same thing that we saw with food list, except everything under cafe list. Okay, so that was a really fast review. I kind of just like ran through that. Do you guys have any questions on anything we've covered so far at this point? Okay, if not, then why don't we just get into our new content, which is the box model. So the box model is kind of um, a framework, a way of thinking, a way of like visualizing how your content is displayed, how it's formatted. Um, after we kind of cover this, you'll have a better understanding of um, where elements are placed on the page. Um, and let's say you want something like centered, you'll have a better understanding of how to make that happen. So um, for those who have done, I believe it was homework two that had you like center stuff. If you're kind of unsure how to do that, hopefully this um, lecture will give you a better understanding. So an analogy we like to use for this concept is a picture frame. So uh, just to draw some equivalencies here, uh, think of the picture frame as your container and the picture, sorry, I keep doing, the picture itself is your content. So whether that's an image, whether it's text, whether it's another div or another container, that is your content. Um, there are more aspects to the picture frame that we have here besides the content. We also have that like space between the picture and the, the frame. In addition, we also have the frame itself, which is its own width separate from that little margin or padding. Um, and then notice based on how we like space our pictures here, that is also another attribute that falls within this overarching idea of the box model. So those four attributes are what we're going to cover and kind of equate to code. So, oh, I, like I said, content is the picture itself. Um, take note of like what we're highlighting here because that is a direct translation to what um, will be referred to. So content, the picture itself, again, that could be an image, that could be text. Padding now is the space between the edges of your container and the content itself. So um, I'm sure you, you guys have seen in like the earlier homework, um, when you didn't have, you didn't affect padding at all, what you might have seen is your text kind of like sticks to the upper left corner by default. Um, that's because our padding by default is set to zero. And so it doesn't know how far to space itself away from the container that holds it. And we look at border. Now border, this is now when we start to look outside of the container. Um, border is an attribute that surrounds the container. And again, we, we would be able to set a certain width for it. Um, and that would kind of just trace the outside of the box and it wouldn't affect anything within it. And lastly, we have the margin. And I think this isn't like a super complete picture. The margin really should imagine like a highlight that goes around both of those frames and not just in between. So just imagine that. Um, now, again, with this one, we're giving spacing between container elements and other container elements. Okay, and then this is kind of a picture that displays each of these at play. It's kind of a lot to look at, uh, sorry, to look at, um, but this is kind of like all of them in one. So let me actually trace with the cursor and see if I can uh, do this. So, Again, this would be if you were to specify the width and height of your div or your container, that's what this edge is, like the one surrounding the like light blue. Um, and then within that is your, your content. We'll see a more hands-on example in a sec. And so removing the like picture frame analogy, this is kind of what CSS would be able to see. And this is just another diagram kind of, you know, showing the same thing. Again, we're doing this color coding to really like drive this one out. And now, 
It might be a little confusing because there's like four things affecting spacing. Like it seems a little redundant. But once you actually manipulate each individual attribute, you'll kind of see how each one comes in handy when you're actually trying to format something. So I do have a little demo. Let's see if I can do this. Oh God, this is so confusing. Give me one sec. Where'd it go? See if it worded it. All right, cool. So what we have here, sorry, I might like take some time looking back and forth, but what we have here is a very like bare bones HTML and CSS kind of combined into one file. Um, you might be wondering like why isn't there a separate CSS file? This is like valid. You can put style within the HTML document and it'll like function exactly the same. So let's just see what we're looking at here. We do have a lot of content on the right side, right hand side with different colors. Um, you might notice the different uh, spacings that we have. Um, let's break it down though. So all of this text just lies within a div, but there's already so much style in here. So let me break it down by looking at the CSS file. Um, so first of all, background color, light gray. Notice when we select div, we're selecting the tag, right? Only this inner box is light gray, but the border is like something else. So when we set width, we're setting the width of only this gray box. This is the div, okay? Border right here, we're specifying 15 px is just an abbreviation for pixels. And we're saying, let's create a border around that div, right? 15 pixels wide. Let's make it well. Let's make it green. Okay. And then within our div, we have our padding, and so that is this inner space here. Notice the padding kind of goes all around the text. Um, actually, think of it less that the padding surrounds the text, and it's kind of jutting inward from the sides of the div, and then the text can just kind of like neatly rest within that those bounds. And then last, lastly, we have our margin. Um, the margin, we can't really see with any colors in this diagram. Rather, it's this invisible white space that's preventing this green from touching the text above it. If you notice 20 pixels, that is the distance between this border and the space above and the space to the left. So why don't we just see what happens when we like manipulate some of these values? What if we change the border to 35. Um, I want to just draw attention to like the, the current width of the gray box. Notice it doesn't change, only the border changes. Everything else has remained the same, so the padding is the same, the width of the box is the same, the margin is the same. Okay, what if instead, oh geez. Let me go back. Okay, what if instead we did We just deleted margin, actually. What should we expect to happen? Yeah, so notice it just jumps directly into that corner that it was previously spacing into the tail paddle from. Um, and again, that doesn't affect anything within the div or anything within the border. Um, it only affects its spacing relative to other elements. Okay. And lastly, the padding. So what if I were to reduce the padding to maybe like 20? Notice here, the text like jumps towards the sides because there's less space within the box, um, less space within it to push the content. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Actually, while we have this demo up, are you guys like curious about anything or how changing one value might affect the result. You can literally just spit it out like, change the margin to 200 pixels and we can just see altogether what that does. There, this isn't like a correct answer type of thing. If you're just, I'll literally do anything that you want me to write. Yes. Change the margin to 2000. I love that, perfect. What do we think is gonna happen, y'all? Actually, what do you think is gonna happen? So let's see, is it gonna go all the way to the right? Whoa, where did it go? 
2,000 is a lot of pixels, y'all. Yeah. Okay, cool. So notice, I didn't just have to scroll to the right, I also scrolled a lot down. Why is that? Well, margin, when we don't specify, we'll see this in future slides, actually. When we just say margin as a cash flow statement, it's referring to margin from all sides. So that includes from the left, from the top, from the right, from the bottom. So this element, there's like even more white space, like I can scroll past it. Oh, never mind. Whoops. Ignore that last statement. But um, yeah, margin will refer to all sides. Hence why we had, I have to scroll down. What other fun experimental value should I try, y'all? I'm going to reset that so I don't have to keep scrolling. Certainly, you guys want to see something chaotic, right? Yes, in the back. Angela, was it? Did you, you had your hand up? That's OK. Uh, we, can, we can move on. Um, yeah, uh, I, this is linked in the slides. So I do encourage you guys to try this on your own. Just like spend five minutes tinkering with it, changing values. Um, and before you press run, think to yourself, like, what's going to happen? And then compare that prediction to what actually happens. Um, that little exercise will do a lot in kind of like building your intuition with um, the box model. So that is, yeah, so that's a little demonstration. Um, moving forward though, cool. Moving forward, we do have another example. This one is a little more like, or less interactive, but this is pre-formatting, right? So notice we don't have any spacing, we don't have any, I mean, all the bullet points here, no visual hierarchy or anything. It's really hard to like understand um, the, the difference in importance between the two things here. But notice as soon as we do the simple formatting, boom, everything is emphasized. Notice the, the attributes here that we may have um, included. Notice there is that spacing between the text and its container div. Notice there's this like nice light blue border that is offsetting the div and the background or the outer, the outer parent container. Um, notice these two aren't stuck to each other. There's maybe a margin preventing them from, you know, being right next to each other. So those four things in play. And why don't we see that in code? Cool. So notice if, well, the boxes that are holding the text are at the class box. Um, just take a look at that. You know, everything that we mentioned is here. I'll just go through it because we've already seen this. So if we take, take a look at the width, first of all, this is, hmm. so the content box has the width of 300 pixels, and that's what we're, we're highlighting here, as so much to that. Um, notice we do have the padding though, so that's that space between the text and its outer div. And of course the border, which is separate from that like inner spacing, and now we're like jumping outside. And then of course this invisible margin that we have highlighted here. Um, this isn't like super exact, but you'll notice that this width between these two elements or that like space is twice as much as the individual on the outside. That's because they're just, they both have their own separate margins and it's just like stacking up. Okay, here's just another, um, so, so far what we've seen is margin, border, padding, all of that, where all the values left above, right, and below are all the same. We don't necessarily have to do that. If for some reason we have some use case where we want something to be a little closer to the right, a little closer to the top, we can change those values individually by specifying top, right, bottom, or left. So if we look here, um, let's just take the padding example. So these principles will apply to all the four different attributes, like exactly the same. Um, but let's just look at padding. So we see we have padding top here, 10 pixels, padding right, 20, padding bottom, 30, and then 40. Um, this can also all be like concatenated or like combined into a single line. Um, notice though, there is kind of an implied order and it is, as we see here, it corresponds exactly with what we have here. So if you want to put it in one line, you can, you can say like, top, right, bottom, left. The only thing is you might forget which is which, so it might be nice to just separate it out. But let's see how that looks when actually displayed. Notice here, padding top 10 pixels, 
makes the content spaced 10 pixels from the top. So that's how, that's how we should think about it. It's not that the content is, is being uplifted 10 pixels, but it's being pushed away from the top by 10 pixels. Um, and so that's what these arrows are showing here. And so we've neatly kind of, you know, put our box towards, kind of towards this upper right. And if we were to have text within that, that's what this might look like. And then the same is true for margins. Notice this is almost the, an identical diagram. Um, this time we can envision this as the div itself and the specified margins as the space outside of it. Okay, actually, before I move on, let me just open it up to questions. Um, yeah, what questions do we have about this? Yes. Um, just in general for either or, um, if you just like apply like the margin top 10 pixels and you wanted everything else to be the same, just do margin top 10 pixels or margin 20 pixels, say, or did it cancel that out? That's actually a pretty good question. I've never seen that. I think I might be giving it conflicting instructions, so I actually wouldn't know. I think you would just have to try it out. I would defer to being more explicit with what you give it because, because margin could refer to the top and you'd be specifying a different one. One might take precedence, I'm not super sure. That's kind of the nuances of CSS that you just figure out as you try. Um, but in that case, if you were to want one is 10 pixels and the rest 20, I would just defer to writing all of them out and having some code that looks a little redundant. Any other questions? Yes, you do have to follow that order. Um, there are certain like invisible CSS conventions that you just kind of learn through trial and error. And as we see any time, we'll see this moving forward too. Anytime there are different like components of a single like attribute that could be separated or could be combined, CSS will expect you to follow the order that they have. And it's just, it's like a flashcard thing. You just have to know it. Yeah. So for margin, top right, bottom left, northeast, west. No, northeast, southwest. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, cool. So why don't we move forward? Um, let's look at units. So one thing we've seen so far, I think I'm gonna go back a slide. We've specified um, the units we've been using so far have been PX, pixels for short. Um, pixels are a are a very like objective value. Um, and as we kind of get into thinking about design. We'll see why pixels might not be the best choice for units. Um, and so, yeah, you guys are familiar with pixels. It's those little like dots that make up the images on your screen. Um, and again, as I said, they're very objective, but might not necessarily be the most flexible. Another unit we could use are percents. And percents are more flexible in that they don't specify objective like widths or lengths or height or anything like that. Rather, it is a very, its um, value is relative. So let's say we have this outer div and an inner div, and the outer div is, has a height of 50%, sorry, a width of 50% and a height with 200 pixels. Um, notice width 50% doesn't refer to the inner div at all. It's only referencing its parent div. So what it's saying is whatever the outer div lives in, which in this case will just be the body, um, whatever the width of the body is, let the outer div be 50% of that. So let's say you had a web page and you had just like this simple setup going on. If you were to like compress and expand that web page, you would also see the outer div respond to that and it would retain that 50%, it would retain that um, ratio um, and not just hold a static width. Whereas notice that we set height to 200 pixels now, if we were to grab the bottom of our web page and you know bring it up and down, the width or sorry, the height of our outer div would not change. Does that kind of make sense? And notice here we have the inner div within that outer div with another width of fifty percent. Again, as I said, width whenever we use percents will always be referring to the parent container. And so, if the outer div is has a width of fifty percent, and then the inner div has a width of fifty percent of that then whatever our web page width is, our inner div will be 25%. So think of those as like multiplicative. Um, it might, you might think it would get like messy or complicated, but it's really nice that they like nest this way because you can really focus on like isolated elements. 
And again, notice how we have height of 50%. This will just be 50% of 200 pixels, which is 100 pixels. So how come the inner div, despite it having a percent height, how come that doesn't respond to changes? Well, if we just like jump out one layer and we see that its parent div has a static height, then we'll know that, okay, well, this is equivalent to just writing 100 pixels. If you were to replace this line with height 100 pixels, the functionality would not change. So, yes. If you're gonna use percents, you should always check that whatever it's living within um, is also able to respond to change. Okay, so those are the two main ones that we're using for like, containers. Um, things like typography, we do use a different one. You guys have seen this, you guys have worked with like MLA format. Anytime you say like 12 point font, that's just referring to a specific unit. Um, do I know like that? Oh, it says 172, one over 72 of an inch. I see it like, I don't think we can like understand what that really means. So I think typically if you're trying to specify specific like font size, you, you just try some values and then see what looks good. That's just kind of how it goes. Anyway, that is it for box model. Um, do we have any questions? And I can also like revisit slides or the demo too, if you guys want. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in this example, like we said, uh, we don't really see what's outside of this or what else is beyond this, but we can just assume that this is the only thing living within the HTML element, or sorry, HTML file. And so if we're considering what is this divs, what is this divs parent? It's the body, right? And the body is just like the web page, the browser, maybe like a screen size. So if we were to like grab the edge and then like, you know, shrink it, expand it, we should see the outer div respond as well. It should always occupy only half of that, but any other questions? Okay, cool. Let's keep going. And the last one is um, kind of getting into the application of these concepts. Um, we'll, we'll kind of see why knowing these principles um, is useful in design. So let's just take a look at this. So we have kind of a lot going on here. I think just take a second to observe it and make a mental note of what attributes could be affected using CSS and how we could have generated this using what we know about borders, margins, paddings, kind of like mentally construct that like grid layout. And we'll check in a sec. Okay, so hopefully you've, you know, kind of generated some ideas here. Um, the first one, just to like walk us through this thought process and how we might like go about converting this into code. Um, so first of all, let's identify our goal, right? So let's say we want this inner content container to always be centered. Okay. And we don't really want it to, it's space from the top to like keep changing. So maybe we'll set a static value, let's say 100 pixels. Um, let's think about this. Should our container, should this container be a set width or a percent? What are we thinking? I probably didn't like phrase that question super clearly. So I don't even really know what I was asking. So I'm gonna just keep going. <laughs> so the answer here is actually on the slide. Um, the reason we have a set pixel width here is it's kind of subjective, but if we want this like box to stay in the middle and just kind of, you know, stay centered, but not necessarily like affect the shape of our text, we probably want to keep that width the same um, and then set the parent div to a relative, sorry, like 8% width. Okay, and then kind of seeing how that might look in code, um, again, we want to think of, we do want to create this white content container, what things will we need within that. Um, again, we already said 100 pixels from the top, so ooh, I already showed the code. Does anyone know what attribute we want to specify to make this space 100 from the top? Is it of the four that we've seen? Yes, it would be margin. 
either you knew it or you're just a fast reader. But it is margin because um, margin isn't affecting anything within that container. So nothing within the white content container is affected by margin. It's only the container relative to its surroundings. And so because we wanted the white container to be separated 100 pixels from the top of its surroundings, we would specify notes we have right here, margin top 100 pixels. Um, we do have some new like terminology here that we've introduced in this slide, which is auto. Um, this is kind of like you saying, I don't know, figure it out to centered or something. CSS will handle that for you. So if you don't want to specify values and you just want it to like somehow center itself, auto is usually the go-to. And then for this one, um, so in your homework, I think homework one, um, where you're just like stacking elements, you may have noticed that everything just kind of like falls in this column. Everything, every successive element is just below the next or before, below the previous one. And so by default, that's kind of how these divs will format its children. Um, but if we want something side by side, again, there's plenty of use cases in which you might want this. Um, how should we go about formatting it that way? Well, what we have here is a CSS uh, selector called, sorry, a CSS attribute called display, which has three different, I think there's more than three, there's more than three different values, but these are like the main ones. Um, to create what we had here in this previous slide, which is where they're in line, we would specify display to be in line block. And so what this is telling us is, or what this is telling the computer rather, is I want my child or all the children of this current div to be line, like, you know, horizontally stacked until you can't fit anymore, in which case then you can introduce a new line. So we can already kind of like think about how that might be useful. Um, and so this is kind of, there, you can use inline, um, but inline block is a better like mix of the two um, because of how it responds to different attributes and yeah. Okay. Over here, we also have, notice we're combining some things here. Right? We have display inline block, so our two children here are kind of next to each other. And then float left, all this is telling us is if you have to choose a side because you're not really filling up the whole width, um, favor the left. If we were to say like float right, for example, they would be towards the right with that little space on the left. Okay, before we move on to design, do we have questions on this? So now let's think about how to ooh, let me go back. So now we want to get into like thinking about layouts. Um, we've seen things in isolation and really like small components. Um, but the cool thing about this, about HTML, especially the ability to nest elements, um, is that we can really componentize and uh, make things or arrange complex formats with very like simple chains of logic. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look. This is like an old Facebook UI, there's a lot going on here, right? If I, if we were to tell you like, go make this, right? Like, where would you even start? So let's think about how we might make this. So the big thing we want to think about, going back to this idea of the box model, is separating things into boxes. And then within those boxes, into more boxes, and so on and so forth. You can see how this is useful because we can specify, well, for one, I know I want a header, so why don't I just right off the bat separate the header and then everything else? Okay. You can use this line of thinking for a lot of things because this everything else can be handled later and you can just work um, general to more specific. So again, we have the header bar and everything else. We've also given some suggestion names like main content. Maybe you can call this container main content and then within that you have some divs. Well, let's divide it even further. Maybe now within your main content, you want to split this left and this right. Maybe you have like a, a sidebar with a bunch of different accessible buttons, things that are useful, things that you want to always be displayed on the page. Well, let's just divide that into a sidebar and we'll just have everything else, right? And in, think about how this might be written in HTML, right? We're constantly creating divs within divs, within divs, within divs. So if you've ever taken the time to like inspect element on a web page, you might've seen like, 30 divs 
like a diagonal line of that. That's kind of where this is coming from. So again, you have the sidebar and everything else. Just looking at the everything else portion, maybe we want a fun little like background image that's just on the top. And we'll have that, we'll separate that into its own div and everything else. You can see how this just like continues to get smaller and smaller. And we've taken this complex um, single web page with uh, multiple components and like logically divided each one and kind of systematically uh, defined the relationships. So again, I'm just gonna keep pressing through. It's the same thing over and over. Um, but yeah, when we go, when we expand and we zoom out, we've constructed a web page. You have all the tools now to understand how to divide, not necessarily code it, but how to divide things mentally and create this like, um, yeah, mental, mental image to um, get started on things like this. Any questions on this so far? Yeah. So you, uh, you recommend always thinking of it like um, starting from specifics and then the general and maybe that, that general to specifics and like you, re you recommend thinking of like specific to general like like how you like. I I would recommend general to specific. I think you generally if you're um, trying to create a web web page from scratch, you kind of know what things you want to include for whatever purpose it is for. Um, but you do want to think general to specific because it allows you to like reduce that cognitive load of like figuring out the, the nitty gritty details and rather separate just I want this this specific thing and then everything that like everything else phrase that I kept using um, and then you can just like figure it out and then slowly shrink your your um, your tasks to like small specific components yeah. So but when you started was the header specific and then everything else was general. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. I think I misunderstood your question. Yeah. So in, in that case, I mean, in terms of like significance on a web page, they're both like equally important, right? Like your header, your nav bar. So it, it's not really like you started from specific, rather you just like identified two different parts that could right away be cut. So maybe that's a better way of putting it. If you can find um, a very general way to like cut things and then deal with those individual things into their own smaller problems, then you should do that. As a general practice, I believe. Any other questions? Sorry, this this coding lecture is like pretty long. If no other questions, let's just keep going. So one cool thing that we do have access to, especially on Chrome, I think other, I mean, a lot of other browsers support this. Um, inspect element. This will be your best friend. So one thing that Chrome has is. Uh, a developer tool that allows you to debug your code. Um, not debug in the sense that it's going to run things for you, but it'll allow you to like pick things apart, uh, almost like with a magnifying glass. So I'm not actually gonna pull up the web page, but if you've ever like accidentally right clicked on something and you've seen like copy paste and then somewhere down the line is like inspect element. And then if you were curious and you, you click that, you might have seen this huge file with like a bunch of like gibberish. Well, that was just HTML. Inspect element is just allowing you to peer into the website web page to view how things are formatted and kind of understand how things are structured. And also, if you were to hover your mouse or sorry, hover your cursor over any given line, you may notice also that the corresponding web page will hover and like highlight the div that you are currently referencing. So this is a really nice tool because it allows you to see the one-to-one -one relationship between the code and how things are displayed. Um, so this is obvious, this is like something that you can just play with on your own time. Um, yeah, it'll show both HTML and CSS. This is just a um, little like uh, just a few things that you can do with this. Again, it's really helpful for debugging because sometimes you'll like write something in your code expecting one thing and then it'll be completely different. This will just show you the why or give you a, a better insight as to why something might be. Um, but just as a recap, you know, we do have thinking about design and like architecting these layout structures. Um, there's almost always going to be a main container as we saw with a Facebook example and that's going to hold like all of your content, right? 
Um, and then the header, of course, might be separate from that. Um, again, if we, if we are thinking of things like top to bottom, we might be wondering, how do we get columns? Well, a column is still just a div, but it's just split maybe vertically. Um, and yeah, so if you do, yeah, so you do create these complex layouts starting with like simple components. I don't want to like go back on what I told you earlier, but yeah. Legit. Do we have any questions? I can also like revisit slides from the previous thing, or if you guys have like new things we can try on the demo. It's still there. No questions. Okay, cool. If no questions, I think we can call it there and move on to the design portion.